Hello everybody, this is Quentin and I wanted to show you some of the new features that have appeared in recent versions of Docker, um, particularly as it relates to running uh, Nginx as a front-end for web applications. Um, I'm using here the new uh, Docker for Mac, uh, which means this stuff will appear to be much more native on my Mac than earlier versions of Docker did, so uh, highly recommended. It's still in beta form at the moment, but um, it's uh, becoming more and more stable and, uh, and making things a lot more fun to play with. Okay, let's have a look. First of all, I wanted a web application to, uh, to play with here, and so I've got a really, really simple one. What I've done is, I, in this app directory here, I have created a Docker file which will use a standard off-the-shelf version of the Nginx Docker container. I'm using the one based on Alpine Linux because it's quite a bit smaller uh, and still has all the facilities that you need for most things. And all I'm going to do is copy an index.html file into place uh, in that container so that when we run this, we should get back my very simple file which says a test page from the app. Let's first of all see if we can run that container. So uh, I'm going to cd into my app, can, app directory. I'm going to say docker build. Uh, I'll tag it as app. Uh, and I'm going to build the container in this directory. There it is. And now if I say docker run um, app, and now I'm actually going to say, and I want to remap port 9000 on localhost to be port 80 in the container. And that should now be running. If I get a browser and point it at localhost 9000, then we get a test page from the app. There you go. And we see a line saying that we got that request um, in, in the console here. That's the Nginx log. Great. So my app works. Pretty exciting stuff, as you can see. Um, I'm going to have uh, lots of demand for this, so I may need to put it behind a load balancer. How might we do that? Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a proxy here, which is also, as it happens, going to be a version of Nginx, and I'm going to put it in front of my app, and then we can play with that and do a little bit more with it. So my proxy consists of another Docker file based on the same version of Nginx. I'm just going to get rid of any standard Nginx uh, site-specific configurations that are in the container, because I want to put my own in place. Uh, which is called proxy.conf, and that looks like this. It's really, really simple. All it does is listen on port 80. Any requests that come in basically get forwarded to um, the web server running on the app, the host named app, the container in this case named app. So I'm going to connect these two together and run them under uh, one system using a Docker Compose file. Now, you'll notice here that this is version 2, uh, and this is significant, and I'll come back to talk about this a, a little bit further um, in the future, but uh, it means that we define stuff under a services um, section here, but otherwise it'll look pretty familiar to most of you who have seen Docker Compose files before. What it says is I'm going to have two services here, one called app, and we get that by building the stuff that's in the app directory, which we've just seen, and we have another service called proxy, which we build from the stuff that's in the proxy directory. And we're going to map a port to port 80 in the, in the proxy directory. Now, because I'm using Docker for Mac here and it has sufficient permissions, I can actually bind port 80 on my localhost to port 80 on, on the proxy. You might want to use something else if you're trying this. Um, so what I should be able to do here is uh, go back up to my parent directory and say docker compose. I, I, this is a useful hint, by the way. I bind uh, an alias of d-c to docker compose. Um, saves an awful lot of typing if you're doing very much of this. But this is basically docker compose um, build. And that will build my app and my proxy. That's pretty much all done already. And then I can say uh, docker compose up, and that will run both of those. Let's go over here. These should now just be running on localhost. And when I run it, I get my same test page from the app. And if we look here, we can see that both the proxy and the app here uh, have a log entry. It went to the proxy, and that redirected it to the app. The order in which the log file entries come out is, is a little indeterminate here. Um, 
and uh, uh, and you can see so our, our very simple proxy in front of the app is working. Now let's go back to the Docker Compose file and if you've used these in the past you may notice that there's something that's missing here. How does the proxy container know where to find the app container? In the past you would have put links in here, you would have done something like uh, is it link or links? I forget. Uh, I think it's links. And you would have had to say something like, um, you want to link to the app container. I haven't done that here. So how does it know this? Well, the answer is that in this new version of Docker, the Docker engine runs a little DNS server, which when you're using these services, uh, can actually return a DNS entry to each container, telling it about the other things within this uh, this service collection here. So let me show you that. I'll just go to another window. If I say uh, docker compose exec, uh, I want to go into the proxy container um, that's, that's currently running. Let me just show you the containers that are running. If I say docker compose ps, you can see we've got this one and we've got this one. Um, they're both versions of Nginx, as I say, with different configurations. I'm going to run docker compose exec uh, and I want to go into the proxy container and run sh. I don't actually have bash on this because I'm just using Alpine Linux. Um, okay, so here I am. So what I can do is nslookup, for example, within this container, I want to ask uh, where is the app container and ignore this error for the moment. Um, sure enough, it actually knows. It knows that the, the, the app container lives at that address and so therefore from within here I can ping it uh, without actually having to specify it in etc hosts or anything like that. And this works, this is actually quite clever. If I do a mount here and show all the things that are mounted inside my proxy container you can see these lines here which are new. What this is saying is that um, the file etc resolve.conf and etc hostname and etc hosts, all of which um, determine what this container thinks about itself and what it thinks about other host names, um, are mounted from the outside. They're mounted from a special device actually in the Docker container. So if I look at this etc resolve.conf, which is um, where do I go to look up host names? we can see that there is this new special DNS server running on 127.0.0.11 and it's because of that that this proxy container is able to find out about the app container and vice versa, they know about each other. And so you don't have to do those links where in advance you have to specify which host should know about which other hosts. Uh, basically the new Docker system does it for you. This is very nice. Okay. So what that means then, if I go here to my uh, proxy configuration here, this is what it looks like uh, in, in the, the proxy front end here. All I'm saying is pass stuff through to the app container, whatever address the app container is actually started on by um, Docker, this will work. This is very clever. Okay, so life is simpler. We have a proxy in front of our app but it doesn't really get us anything very useful. However, what another thing we can do with services is this nice command called docker scale. Uh, oh, I beg your pardon, docker compose scale. Oh, my terminal. Okay, it doesn't really do anything on its own. Let's do minus H, right. And what that allows you to do is to run multiple containers for a given service. So you can essentially do uh, scaling up of your particular service uh, by specifying service equals number here. So let's try this again. I'm going to say docker, uh, docker compose, docker compose scale app equals four. And it will fire up three more instances of my app, so if I now do docker ps for example, you can see here I've got one proxy uh, and four instances of the app. If I now go into my, let's find my docker exec command here uh, that we had before, if I now go in here and do nslookup 
app again, we get four IP addresses back from this special built-in DNS server, which means that the proxy, um, when it normally when it when it asks for one of these, will get back all of these addresses. It can pick one, and it does round-robin DNS load balancing across those um, across those uh, four different containers. This is cool. However, there's a problem here. When you put in something like this into your Nginx configuration, it looks up this host name at the time at which the configuration is read. And if you actually try running this, you will find, uh, let's go back here. We're looking at this. Uh, if I run this, I, I'm hitting refresh multiple times here, and you'll see that all of those uh, requests are going to my first app container. And Ginix hasn't worked out that there are three other containers running. And in fact, if I stop it and restart it again, we'll dock those up. There you go. Interestingly, Docker Compose remembers your scaling values. So you notice when I stop it and restart it, it remembers that I had it scaled to four. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, ah, look, it's going to app two now. This is good. But, and app four, and app three, and so on. So this is quite good. Um, but there is still a problem here, which is that if I were to change the scaling now, let's suppose I scale it down to, um, sorry, my terminal's doing funny things here, docker scale app equals two. Let's go down. It's killed off two of them. But because Nginx hasn't reloaded its um, configuration, it doesn't actually know about this. And in fact, sometimes when I run this, it blocks because it's trying to talk to one of those containers that isn't there. OK, I'm going to interrupt that. So what we'd really like is for Docker uh, for Nginx within the proxy to have a much more dynamic view of the various containers that are running behind it. And there's a way to do this. Basically, what we can do is in our proxy.conf, instead of this very simple proxy pass here, we do a couple of extra lines. We say, first of all, that we need a resolver, uh, which is a DNS resolver. And in this case, we're going to use that magic address that Docker uh, uses for its DNS server. This is the only slightly dodgy bit of this. I'm not sure whether that address is defined, whether that'll stay the same in future versions of Docker and so on, but it seems to work reliably at the moment. I hope they don't change it, or maybe there's a better way of discovering this uh, automatically. If, if anyone else knows a way, do let me know. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to define a variable, uh, which we're going to call upstream, say. Um, which is going to be HTTP colon slash slash app, as we had there. And then we're going to make proxy pass refer to that variable. Now, this is because of a little bit of magic, which is that when you use proxy pass um, and just put in a variable name here, it will try and understand what the contents of that variable mean in various different ways, including looking it up in a resolver if it has been given a resolver. So um, what this will do is it will now make sure that uh, each time this request comes in, it will use the resolver to, to look it up, and that will help load balance across multiple um, multiple uh, nodes, multiple containers. Now, there's one other thing you want to do here, particularly in testing. Unfortunately, um, the uh, when, when Nginx does look things up from this special built-in DNS server, it actually caches the results for quite a long time. And so typically, uh, I think that's five minutes by default. It's at least 30 seconds, and I think it may actually be five minutes. So if you're scaling things up and down at all, uh, you know, regularly here, um, you actually want to uh, make that cache a lot shorter here so that um, it will discover changes much more quickly. Uh, so what you can actually add on the end here is when the definition of the resolver, sorry, you can say how long the results from this resolver are valid for, and I'm just going to say five seconds here. Um, you wouldn't want to do that in production. You would want a longer time in production uh, because 
the, the smaller the number there, the, the more load it'll put on the little DNS server and so on. But for experimentation and testing, this works very nicely. And um, if you change this number to something higher, the performance will be higher, but it'll take more time to resolve to your, uh, to, to um, uh, see the effects of any scaling changes you make. Okay, so with that little change to the proxy config, we're saying go and find out names from 127.0.0.11. Remember the results for five seconds. Uh, set your upstream variable to be that, and then proxy pass onto the value of that upstream variable using a resolver to look up anything in here if you don't understand it already. Okay, let's save that proxy.conf. I'm going to interrupt this again, and I'm going to do docker compose build just to make sure I've got a new version with uh, with this updated proxy.conf in place and then I'll do docker compose up. Okay, once now we're just firing up our two app containers, our one proxy container, and if I refresh here you can see that's gone to app one, the second one went to app two and so on, and it'll approximately if I keep hitting refresh you'll see some of them go to one and some of them go to the other. If I now go into another window here and change my Docker, cons Docker scale here, and because even though this is a laptop, I can do nice things like maybe 30 copies of this. It's now firing up 28 more containers. There we go. Uh, and we should find that if I hit refresh on here, oh look, that one went to container 11. Let's do it again. That one went to container 10 container 3, container 20, and so on. So because the resolver was timing out fairly promptly, within five seconds of me making that scaling change, and Ginix was discovering that uh, there were a whole lot more containers um, it, could, it could use because the DNS was returning, in that case, uh, 30 names um, rather than just the 30 IP addresses rather than just the few it had before. And similarly, if I scale it back down to three, it kills off lots and lots of containers. Do, 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 do. And if we look back in this terminal, we'll see them all exiting. Uh, and after about five seconds, this should continue to work just fine. You see that one went to uh, app three down here, app one, app three, app one, app three, and so on. App two got in there as well if I keep refreshing. So there you are. I think that's quite neat. You can do simple load balancing using a round robin DNS entirely within Docker. I haven't run, had to run any special services like console or Docker Gen or any of these things that you used to have to use in the past um, uh, to, to make this work. You can run a simple instance of Nginx with minimal um, configuration. Uh, as a load balancing front end proxy to multiple containers. And the only little tricks you might want to use, do are um, specifying uh, this using a variable so that it gets evaluated each time, and maybe turning down the validity period on the resolver if you are scaling this on a um, up and down on a regular basis. Once you know roughly what you want to do, you probably want to turn this up to at least 30 seconds. Um, but uh, I hope that's useful, and uh, I think this is really rather a nice feature of Docker here. It's hard to think of a more simple load balanced app um, than, than this one here, and the new features in Docker make that possible. Thanks very much.